Hello, hello, hello. It's Lynn Lindbergh, Health and Fitness Motivation Podcast. And today we have another replay. This one I sheepishly bring to you. <laughs> it is the very, very first podcast episode produced when it, we originally called this the Couch to Active podcast, which is now the Health and Fitness Motivation podcast, but it's still me. So this is episode number one, the very, very first of 400 and now 42 episodes of the Couch to Active podcast. So enjoy this blast from the past. Everything inside of me would say, no, no, you've got to, Lynn, you've got to talk about this first. Finally, get back to a life with exercise. And this is your first step. We're going to start getting you moving. I'm Lynn Lindbergh, your bad couch guru. Hey friends, it's Lynn Lindbergh here and you're listening to the very first Couch to Active podcast. I am so glad you found us here and I really hope and expect that through this podcast and through the Couch to Active resources, you are going to find that active lifestyle that you're looking for. And I know that you're probably expecting me to tell you a story about my background and my credentials and all my certifications and then tell you about what you can expect in this podcast and let you get to know me a little bit. And that's all going to come, but not in this first episode. And here's why. When I started putting together all the different topics that we need to work through together, I had to put the brakes on all of it. And I had to back up and I just something inside of my gut was was literally screaming at me, you know, you know, how sometimes something inside of you says, you've got to do this, or you you can't do that. And, and that's what I had going on is, I, I literally had my Excel spreadsheet of, you know, topic number one on week number one, and topic number two on week number two. And everything inside of me was saying, no, no, you've got to Lynn, you've got to talk about this first. And so uh, the next podcast coming up, we're going to take a look at the real content of Couch to Active. But today, I wanted to talk to you about the pain. The pain that I know that so many of us are feeling. The pain that I've been through in my own life. And very, very likely, the pain that you're going through in your life. And I've got to back up even further and tell you, doing a podcast is actually a little bit weird for me because at my core, I really like listening to people a lot more than I like talking. And when you do a podcast, <laughs> it's a little weird because here I am, quite honestly, I'm sitting at my desk in my office with a microphone talking to nobody but knowing that you hear me right now today. So thank you for being here. And um, I'll do my best to serve you here from my little treadmill desk. I would love it if I could do a reverse podcast, you know, one where everybody just talks to me and I listen. That would be cool. But let's go back to this pain thing, because it just literally even right now I can feel it pulling at my gut and pulling at my heart saying I've got to let folks know I see you I hear you I feel your pain and 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 it's a weird thing to say because when we think about a podcast that's around getting people to exercise more at least what goes through my mind is I think of you know, really skinny, beautiful beach body women and men with six pack ripped abs saying, come have my protein powder, do this, you know, workout program, and we will fix you. And ta da, look at this woman, she lost 80 pounds doing this and taking these pills and supplements. And, and that's not what this is at all. What I do is I really pull back from all of that. And, and I and I figured out what it really takes to get to where you can do exercise you want in a way that helps you love your life more. And here's the really weird thing. Something about that topic 
creates a space where everybody I'm around tells me all about the pain they're in. And I love it because I know it's a vulnerable thing. And I love hearing people's stories, even stories of pain. And and it's just become this this theme of where I just spend a lot of time with people and so much of why they're not exercising has everything to do with trials and tribulations in their life or everything about why they are exercising has to do with trials and tribulations in their life. And that was true for me also. It has been true. It's still true today. So I just had to call out that there's all kinds of pain out there. You don't even know how many times I've had somebody come to me and they want to talk about building an active lifestyle. And the next thing you know, they're crying. They didn't mean to, they didn't want to, but they're just crying. And they say, Lynn, I'm broken. I've got this and this and this going on in my life. I've got this and this and this going on with my health. And I've got this and this going on with my mental health. I am broken. And and these are people that when you meet them, you would never guess or know they've got so much going on in their lives. And so I hear it. I hear the pain. I feel it. And And it goes on both sides of the spectrum. One is I have all these things going on and it makes it hard for me to exercise. Another one is... I just had a really painful thing go on and now I'm going to exercise because of it. Like, for example, you know, I've had clients who somebody close to them just died way too young and it shook them awake and they said, I need to fix this right now because I don't want to be them. (laughs) I don't want to be dying young and now I'm realizing I absolutely have to do this. And then there's other people who, you know, are seen their parents aging and not aging well, and they don't want that to be them. And then there's other folks who have chronic illnesses and are stuck in the regular programs of fixing you and putting you into a fitness box and making you work hard and go hard and, t- and go home. Those aren't working for them either. And, and it just leaves them in this icky spot feeling sick and out of shape and just feeling fat and awful. And they don't like it. And it's a place of real pain. And so I'm going to pretend for a moment that you and I are sitting in a room together. Because essentially, we kind of are now, right? I'm, I'm in your ears anyway. And if you were here with me, I would look at you right in the eyes. And I would honestly, genuinely ask you, how are you doing? How are you doing right now? And I'd give you time to soak that question in and answer it in a meaningful way. How are you? And with that, I would reassure you that it doesn't matter what answer you give. It's okay. It's your reality. It's where you are right now today in this moment because right now today is always all we ever have and you're going to hear me say that 10,000 times so you might as well learn it right now right now is all you have so (laughs) but I would look you in the eyes how are you and your answer is perfectly fine the only wrong answer is where you lie to yourself and you tell yourself you're doing okay when you're really not when you're stuffing it and shoving it and gritting through. And then if you were right there with me today, I'd give you a big hug, say, hey, one step at a time. We're going to work through this. I know your life is way more complicated than any little social media post could ever fix. (laughs) And I also know that your life doesn't need fixing, does it? We can always improve. We can always grow. But I also know that there's pain. There's chronic illnesses. There's loss. 
there's job responsibilities, there's lack of sleep, there's kids that keep us awake at night. It just like long commutes, it goes on and on and on. And now let me take a time out from all that for just a minute. And I'd like to kind of back up a couple of years. <laughs> Let's go back about 15 years in my life and tell you, I hear you. Sometimes life is just crazy hard. And just when you think you have life figured out, just when you think it's going good, bam, right? There's always a curveball that gets thrown our way and just throws things off. And I got to tell you, that that was me a little over 15 years ago. I remember thinking, life is pretty easy for me. I was, what, late 20s, early 30s, thinking about 15 years ago, thinking, ah, life, like, life's going pretty good. Then, boom. I had so many things happen in my life that there, there's an in, a stress indicator that, that says, you know, you have different events in your life that happen. And if you get above 100 on this scale of points for stressors, then that's a lot of stress and you should probably get professional help. For about three years, I was sitting at over 500 a year. It was just it was just ridiculous. I, I moved to a new city. I had a baby. That child got sick a lot. I was working a new job. I lost my job. I had seven people die in my family. I went to so many funerals. It was just ridiculous. And I ended up getting a divorce in all of that. And that was the beginning of uh, 10 years of being a single mom. There were so many mornings when I was on my long, hour-long commute to downtown Seattle, where I would get on the highway and just cry. I was so overwhelmed, so drained, so exhausted. And then I would pull off the I-5 freeway, take the James Street exit in Seattle. And once I got into the city where I knew people could see me again, I would give myself a pep talk to pull yourself together, Lynn, pull yourself together breathe deep. Come on, you can do this. <sighs> and then I would get to the parking garage, wipe my tears, touch up my makeup if I needed to. And then I'd walk from the garage to the office, put on my game face and do a killer job at work because I loved what I did at work. I needed the job. I needed to be able to buy groceries for my child <laughs> and pay my mortgage. I know you understand. I know you've been there, so many of you. And we just suck it up and do it. Now, I'm all for being authentic. And you'll see and hear me be really authentic here. It's just who I am. But that time in my life was such a mess that if I came into work and was just completely authentic with everyone around me about what was really going on in my personal life, I guarantee you, I would not have kept that job for very long. I had to compartmentalize. It was a dark time. It was a hard time. And I remember thinking to myself, honestly, questioning, would I ever feel joy again? And I knew, I knew in my head, like we all know, we all know in our head logically, we can feel love again, we can feel joy, we can feel happiness. We know that. But when you're there, when I was in what I call my dirty 30s, the dark times of my life, I didn't know if I could ever feel joy again. I wasn't there. And there was nothing anybody could have told me that could have pulled me out of my pain. Yet, I was really good at sucking it up for work and putting on that smile and plowing through and doing my best because that's what we do, isn't it? Because we're good at it. We hold it together sometimes. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I keep telling myself it's all good. And it took a lot of years for me to slowly come out of that and and finally again, feel joy, finally again, have energy. And a big piece of it was 
figuring out how to stay active when life was not just busy, but life was crazy. And life wasn't just crazy for me at that time. Life was just insane. When I started working through all that, and I actually got to a point where I was feeling joy again, feeling happiness again, it wasn't until then that I actually believed it was possible. I I know you know what you mean. And I know this whole first precursor podcast is a huge tangent. And, and I know it has both nothing and everything to do with living an active lifestyle. But something in my gut said, Lynn, this is so critically important to address the issue of all the pain, all the hidden pain that's out there, all the stories that we have within us that we've never even told anybody, all the secrets we have of hurt and pain that we've just shoved aside and we're dealing with it because we're good at dealing with it because we just want to move on with our lives and have a pursuit of happiness. So I want folks to know, I see you, I hear you, I know it's there. And then as we get through more of these podcasts and we get to know each other a little bit, this whole really weird first podcast is going to make a whole lot more sense. We'll be able to take this concept of the pain, all the pain I see, and wrap it into so many different things. And I know if you're listening and thinking, well, okay, that's great. 15 years ago, Lynn had some tough times. What does she have to deal with now? I get it. I hear you. I have worked through a lot and I've landed myself in a really wonderful spot. I've remarried to the greatest man on the planet, I think. (laughs) And um, I have a couple of wonderful kids and I live in this just beautiful place where I can walk and feel safe. All of that on paper looks really great. But let me just share and put it out there right now. I've got a couple of chronic health issues. I have a mysterious lung issue that was uh, misdiagnosed as asthma for years and years and years. And um, it's made exercise incredibly difficult at times. And uh, well, I'll tell you more about that in future podcasts, I'm sure. And then I have fibromyalgia, which is a lifelong chronic issue that leaves me somewhat debilitated. And I never know what day that's going to hit and what day it's not. And so these two things look like they're with me for the rest of my life. And it looks like I will always for my whole life be dealing with the pain that comes with both of them, the chronic pain issues and how they slow me down. And essentially, I call it, they put a parasail on the back of me. So I'm, you know, trying to run forward in life. And I got this big old parasail behind me. (laughs) You got to laugh or you're going to cry, right? So yes, chronic pain and life issues that make it hard to exercise. They are so near and dear to my life because I'm dealing with it every single day, just like all y'all. So (laughs) and on another note, uh, my husband has rheumatoid arthritis. So when he was 30 years old, he could not walk without a cane. And at 30 years old, this young, strong man had a double knee replacement. We joke around that he's somewhat bionic. And nowadays, if you saw him, you would never even guess. He just looks fantastic. But but I know because I live with him, right? And I get to see how there are parts of him physically that are really fragile uh, because of the arthritis. And uh, every morning is a struggle for him. A lot of evenings are struggles for him. So working through chronic health issues in the middle of wanting to exercise is really near and dear to our hearts. Anyhow, this was a complete tangent, but I really, really wanted to look you in the eyes and just ask you, really, how are you? Have you heard of the Couch to Active book yet? 
you've got to check it out. Couch to Active is the framework that I use with my clients one-on-one to walk them through an active lifestyle. And it works. It works really well. So if you're here on podcast number one, and you're one of those people that says, hey, I'm a quick study. I want to learn this. I want to jump in right away. Just head over to amazon.com, look up Couch to Active, get the book, and get working. To learn more about Couch to Active, head over to our website, www.couchtoactive, that's toactive.com. On the next podcast, we'll actually start getting into some real content. And that one is kind of interesting. It's called Why You're Not Exercising. All right, we'll see you over there soon. Bye-bye now.